Um, our third speaker is um, Alison Bode, who is Director of Library and Learning Services at Bath Spa University. Um, and she's also a member of the Executive Board of SCONL, chairing the SCONL Leadership Task Group, which is particularly pertinent, I think, to her talk. Um, the thing that um, you probably don't know about Alison is that she is, or was, a rocket science librarian. <laughs> and Alison's going to talk to us on leading libraries, supporting new and emerging leaders of Sc in SCONL. Alison. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I was absolutely delighted to be given this opportunity to talk to you about the outcomes of the recent Sconnell Leadership Task and Finish Group. Um, and to be able to come here to Ireland to do that is, is wonderful. Um, it has been said that leadership is a journey um, and it's not a destination. It's a marathon and not a sprint. Well, here we are on the final leg of the first day of our conference, and I really hope that my presentation doesn't seem too much like a marathon, but I am conscious that I'm kind of the last hurdle standing between you all and the bar. Um, so um, I know that it's going to be a bit of a sprint through the outcomes of this quite extensive piece of work, some of which John ha has already mentioned. Um, so I wanted to... Um, There we go. I just wanted to uh, touch on what I'm roughly going to cover this afternoon. So an overview of the initiatives of the Sconnell Group, focusing mainly on new and emerging leaders, some key findings from the research, and I'd like to conclude with some tips for the top. So leadership's important to us as a community, not just in terms of meeting the many challenges of leading a library in times of unprecedented change, um, but also um, in making the library's voice heard at the top of our institutions. So Sconnell asked its members about the most significant leadership and management challenges facing them and their institutions, and I guess the academic library community in general. And uh, three very closely connected themes emerged. Uh, the future vision for library services, advocacy and proving value, and leadership. Um, one of Sconnell's responses to this was the formation in January 2016 of the Sconnell Leadership Task and Finish Group, um, which I chaired. And the aims were uh, to develop a range of practical initiatives to enhance the collective leadership capacity right across Sconnell, uh, but also to support and guide individuals and groups of staff in Sconnell libraries um, in their own leadership development. There were two key questions. So what skills and attributes do we need? And how do we develop ourselves to extend our strategic influence? Um, the outcomes of the research and the briefing notes and the various services that we set up um, were um, set up under the overarching title of leading libraries. And um, they, the work really aimed to respond to these questions. Um, we did um, launch the whole suite of initiatives at an event in London in last October. So it was about an 18-month piece of work. Um, so, um, the higher education landscape is changing and the role and makeup of the academic library is evolving in response and it needs to evolve in response. Um, there are a number of factors contributing to the need to develop new leadership models and these include the, the changing roles and position of library leaders within their organisational hierarchy and the changing structures of libraries within HE including the rise of multidisciplinary teams and multi-professional teams, what I think Jim called this morning um, the, the more messy and more fluid structures um, of organisations. And um, I think there are lots of changing models um, of convergence and deconvergence now, quite often differing very much from uh, the past when libraries were much more discrete uh, services within their parent organisations. So, um, the work of the task group was underpinned and informed by various pieces of research. Um, so, some desk-based research, uh, which was a literature review and a review of leadership courses, two online surveys of SCONL members, 
and two sets of interviews, um, which uh, were the uh, view from above and the view from beyond um, that you heard a little bit about um, from John. And I'll say a little bit um, more about the findings of that research shortly. The leadership development continuum uh, ranges from aspiring leaders to established directors of service, so broadly characterised as uh, aspiring, emerging, newly appointed and established leaders. My task group uh, worked on defining um, the support that was already available to leaders in the community in each of these groups and in developing a range of initiatives that would um, fill the gaps, if you like. Um, so I think it's really important to emphasise here that um, we're talking about the most senior leadership teams in Sconnell. So basically directors, deputies and those who may aspire to a role at that senior level. And um, the main focus of my session um, this afternoon is on the emerging leaders in the uh, Sconnell community. And those are defined really as being the deputies or those that are working at second tier. Um, however, I would say that the supporting documentation um, is openly, openly available on the Sconnell website. And I think it will be quite useful for anyone who's interested in learning more about academic library leadership. And so here we've grouped together the range of recommendations and support uh, for emerging leaders. Uh, firstly, um, the informal networks that are so, so important. So Sconnell facilitates the creation of groups of deputies and groups of new directors who come together to network, share experience and learn from each other in, in an informal way. And significantly, 81% of current and previous members of those deputy groups that we surveyed and believe that involvement in one of those groups had a really positive impact on their careers. And um, action learning can be a powerful development tool for um, leader, leaders. And, uh, Sconnell's partnered with um, the counterpart professional associations in the UK for estates, finance, HR and IT to facilitate um, action learning sets um, for deputies actually across professional services and universities. I think it's especially valuable um, to learn from others in similar roles in other areas of the university, um, especially as we're so often collaborating with those people um, on projects and on delivering services to support the student experience. And um, emerging leaders might want to find a mentor, so Sconnell has set up a new mentoring scheme called Sconnell Mentoring, and it's aimed primarily at those working at deputy level. Um, and we've already had about 30 mentors and a dozen mentees, and we're in the process of matching those up. For those that are looking to undertake a, lead, a formal leadership course, um, Sconnell's produced a mini uh, directory of leadership courses, and this includes an indication of the cost of the course, but also, I think, usefully, an indication of people on Sconnell who've already done that course, and if they'd be willing to share that experience um, with you so that you can make a more informed choice as to whether that's something that would be good for you. And it's kind of a, what I call a trip advisor of of, of training courses. Um, so, and we can all learn from the latest research, and obviously we, we clearly should all read the latest issue of the new review of academic uh, librarianship, as it includes uh, John's uh, literature review. Um, but a starting point might be Sconnell's um, lit own literature review on leading libraries in uncertain times. And this has a focus on HE and on ac academic libraries in particular. And it's organised into five broad categories. So personal leadership, change management, broader organisation and personal development. Then the fifth section, sector knowledge, gives details of the various sources recommended by strategic leaders. So these include the obvious, like the Times Higher, and of course Wonky, mentioned by many now as an invaluable source of news and views about the sector. So you can dip into that literature review um, on specific issues or themes, but I would really recommend that you could start with our, we've got a top 10 reads section, and finally, um, what can we learn from other leaders? 
In particular, what are the views of university senior leaders about academic library leadership and culture? And so emerging leaders should seek to understand how others see us, because looking at how we are viewed by those above at the top of the universities may be helpful in considering how to develop our own leadership style and approach. Um, so in other words, what, uh, what do the top brass really think of us as leaders and how do we develop to succeed as a leader alongside them sitting at the top table? So to explore these questions, Scunnell commissioned some research involving um, interviews with strategic leaders and the research was done by the consultants uh, David Baker and Alison Alden and uh, published in the two reports um, that we've already uh, mentioned, the view from above and a view from beyond. And the research pieces are going to be covered in much more detail by Roisin Guire in one of the parallel sessions tomorrow. And Roisin's the university librarian at the University of Portsmouth, and she co-chaired the Sconnell Leadership Group with me and led particularly on the literature review and, and the interviews. Um, but finally, I'd just like to draw your attention to a couple of other useful briefing notes that we did produce as part of the work, one on action learning sets and the other on coaching and mentoring. So all of the research quite substantial, um, so for today I'm just quickly going to uh, group the discussion under three uh, headings and touch on it very, very briefly. Um, so, as I said, a key aim of the research was to look at library leadership from different angles and challenging our own perceptions of how we are viewed and, and positioned within our institutions. Um, so, of course, there was a wide and differing range of views from the people that were interviewed. Um, what these VCs and other senior leaders uh, said was thoughtful and insightful, mostly helpful, but not always but certainly thought-provoking. And there were a lot of quite positive comments about the role of libraries and their leaders. But yes, there were some that were less than complimentary. But starting with the positive, um, there's confidence in the library leadership to lead change. They're valued and they're well-led. The research validates the perception that libraries operate efficiently and effectively, but without being on the strategic radar of their institutions. So it seems that VCs, VCs value the work that the library does, and particularly in relation to supporting students and being close to an understanding of how students learn, but they don't generally see the library as a strategic concern. So the, largely, the library is largely invisible to the senior executive group. The interviewer is asked, so, is the library a concern to you? Does it keep you awake at night? And generally, the answer was no. It's well run. So the comments were quite complimentary in that sense, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. So yes, it's well run, so it's not a priority. And thinking about it, so it drops down the list. So many of those interviewed highlighted the importance of library leaders having a wider knowledge of the sector than that that directly impacts on their own area. And that prompted the question, does the senior academic library leader need to be a librarian? Well, I think that we need to reflect long and hard on that question and use the answers to advocate for what we do and what we can do for our organisations. From the survey of directors, we know that Sconnell uh, Library directors have a wide-ranging portfolio of responsibilities, with lead responsibilities in many areas other than the library. So as we all know, open access, research support, academic study skills, IT, student services, and more. But despite this diverse and sometimes extensive range of responsibilities, in today's environment, you're no longer automatically given um, a place at the top table as part of the role as a university librarian. So from our survey of directors, board table representation is not evident, with only 2% of library leaders sitting on the VC's executive board. Now, I'll grant you that there's much more um, representation on academic board and senior management team type um, committees, but not at the VC executive board. And so that makes it really challenging for library leaders to extend their strategic influence to achieve maximum impact. 
So in terms of leadership development, what do we need to do? According to one VC, it's about being relevant to the institution and its long-term strategy. Um, but, you know, so far, that sort of seems to me like motherhood and apple pie, because isn't that all, what we all do anyway? Um, but I was interested to hear what John said about the disconnect with only a quarter um, of those strategic plans connected with the institutional strategic plan, and that's a worry. Um, so clearly not, artic not articulating how we support um, the institution well enough. So what do we need to do um, to change the perspectives of others about what we do and what we're good at is probably what I think is the key question. So now, um, with a bit of luck, I'm going to ask Dara to switch on to my prezi and go a little bit more up-tempo and give you some of um, our tips for the top. So at the end of our 18-month project, I asked the leadership task group um, what their top tips would be. And um, yeah, I'm just going to share those with you um, now quite quickly. So the first is know the organisation and how it works. And um, I must confess to having chosen um, Thomas Cromwell in Wolf Hall to illustrate this. Um, Actually, it's because uh, Hilary Mantel is one of the honorary graduates at Bath Spa University, and I met her at her graduation ceremony. So, I mean, that's kind of a perk of being a library leader in some ways. But that's an aside. Um, this really is about developing your own institutional knowledge and developing your political skills and your political awareness. I mean, p political with a small p. So, network across the organisation and know where the shadow networks exist. Go to university events like inaugural lectures and degree shows and the like to network and develop that institutional knowledge. Do the work outside of the meetings, the official meetings. Go for coffee. Um, create a relationship with your peers in, and be supportive of other people's projects and involve other people in your projects. Number two, you need to know the finances really, really well. You need to know them inside out. And it's useful to have some cheapest statistics right up your sleeve. Number three, delegate well. So get some good deputies and delegate. Don't micromanage. And this is what Jim called having um, the chutzpah to get out of the way. And so you don't have to rush to make a decision and don't feel that you have to make it alone. And remember, you can do anything but not everything. Shine a light on others' talents. Don't keep your deputies in the library. Get them out and get them across the organisation. Shine a light on their talents. To quote the American leadership guru, Simon Sinek, stars want to see themselves rise to the top. Leaders want to see those around them rise to the top. And uh, keep learning. Find a mentor. Get a mentor yourself. And keep reading. Keep up with the news. Read wonky. And keep asking questions. Keep asking, is this really the best that we can do? And keep listening. Good leaders, listen. And keep learning from other senior university leaders through observation. For example, decision-making or chairing difficult meetings. But by the way, that might be a really good way of um, finding out how not to do things. Put yourself forward is my number six. So there's Katniss. And don't wait to be asked. Volunteer for opportunities across the university. And doing this allows you to build your strengths and values in the areas you want to be recognised for. Move out of your comfort zone. So get out and about. And there's Cliff Richard in the summer holiday. I'm a great advocate of the bus driver's holiday myself. Visit other libraries whenever and wherever you can. Consider working abroad or getting a secondment or shadowing someone up, up above you. Um, last year, I went on an Erasmus-funded trip to Denmark and saw a whole bunch of libraries there. Um, it was a really, really fa fa fabulous experience. And yesterday, I took the opportunity uh, of being here in Ireland to visit um, the University of Limerick. So thank you, Gobnet, for that opportunity. And what lucky university you are um, when, when that library space opens. Number eight, have an opinion beyond the library. Don't just talk about the library. 
Don't assume that you've been invited um, just to cover your own area. Have an opinion on other areas too. Number nine. Um, this is, that, that's the number nine. That's number eight. I'm trying to rush now because someone's told me I've only got one minute to go. But I've got enough time for the last ones. So number eight is have an opinion beyond the library. Um, and that's my uh, slide for that. And the next one is the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's about knowing yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So make the best of your qualities and minimize the weaknesses. And know what presses your buttons and give yourself time to work around that. Um, it's really um, important for you to know and stick to your values and that will help you build trust and to be authentic and respected for what you say. And the last one, I think is probably the most important, it's from Ferris Buller's Day Off. <laughs> it's um, about um, looking after yourself because it's tough at the top and sometimes it's a bit lonely and you need stamina and you need to build resilience. So try to work out how you can achieve this. What works for you? Is it yoga? Is it exercise? Is it curling up with a good book in front of the fire? And if things don't work out quite so well, remember, it's not how far you fall, but how well you bounce that's important. <laughs> and finally, finally, we're all human, so don't forget to be nice to your boss. <laughs> Thank you.